Hi, welcome back to Gold Derby. I'm Christopher Rosen. I'm joined by Hamilton star Philip Asu, a newly minted first time Emmy nominee for her performance in Hamilton, the movie, which is on Disney Plus right now. I guess, Philip, let's start there. Congratulations on the nomination. Can you tell me, um, you know, what was your immediate reaction to finding out you were nominated? Oh my gosh, thank you, first of all, for, for speaking with me today. Um, yeah, I was just so surprised. I mean, not only had the film come out, you know, last year, but we made the film nearly like five or six years ago. So, you know, it's such an honor and I'm, I'm so grateful that, you know, this show has continued to just um, be a part of my life. And, and, and I'm always just so grateful to be able to celebrate it and celebrate the work that we've done. I'm, I'm really proud. Yeah, you mentioned that. I mean, like, um, for people who don't know, the movie that's streaming now is uh, the original Broadway cast. I think it was, you're right, like literally five years ago. I think the it was performances yeah. in July of 2016 and then like some pickups that happened on stage to get like the full uh, complement of recording. I guess when you think about your, I, I guess I wanted to ask you specifically about your performance. When you go back or I don't know if you've watched it or when you think about it, like, what do you think about of your performance five years later, basically? And it's kind of... I guess not, it's a unique situation, I would say, to be able to get to have that document as a Broadway, as a performer who does Broadway, I guess. So like, yeah, can you talk a little about that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you sort of, was, you were just talking about this, but it's so unique to be able to, um, a theater piece, to be able to revisit it and watch it in that way. Um, it's, it's completely new for me. Um, you know, usually when I'm done with the show, it lives in my memory and in the photographs and maybe a soundtrack. But other than that, um, you know, this is such a unique experience. And, and I think for me watching it for the first time, I was very emotional and just so excited to see the nuances and, and the energy and the collaboration between the cast and the ensemble. Like there, there really just were so many wonderful magical moments happening on that stage all at once. And what you saw was truly, in my opinion, all of the best moments that they could possibly choose to tell that story. Now, there were a lot of things that you weren't seeing because you know you, you, can't, you can't do that, but I think that every moment that you saw was the best seat in the house. And, and for me personally, just watching my own work, um, you know, doing something that many times, living through it, you know, for hundreds of performances, there's like a, a chemistry shift that happens in my body. You know, my muscles start remembering. I, I start to like, you know, I felt myself like watching myself singing and then feeling like, wow, I need to breathe more. <laughs> you know, like I just remember before Helpless, like, you know, really just like gearing up for that number because a lot of it was just running around and trying to steady my breath so I could feel myself sort of like breathing <laughs> with what I was watching. And it all sort of just comes flooding back because I know that, that experience lives somewhere in my body, in my cells. And so, you know, I, I definitely was reminded of some beautiful things that I had forgotten and then was reminded of the things that like, I've definitely not forgotten um, that were very challenging and, and wonderful and beautiful about that entire experience. Yeah, I wanted to ask you something potentially challenging here or for you as a performer. I was like, one of the things I really love, I, I, if you weren't, if people weren't fortunate enough or to have the privilege of seeing the original cast on stage or whatever, like your, you have the gas that you let out at the end uh, is not on the soundtrack, right? So that was like a thing that you could only really see uh, if you saw it on stage. And as, as someone who was fortunate enough to see you perform it, I was like blown away by that. It totally took me by surprise and like, it's so emotional. And I guess like having to do that every night, I was always wondering like, how do you, it, it's so emotional for the audience. People are like, you know, obviously like, tears and stuff by the end, having to hit that level every night, I guess. Can you talk a little about that as a performer? I get, I just like, that seems like such a challenge to me as, as not a performer. So I guess I'd love to hear you talk about that. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's a wonderful challenge as an actor to feel like, um, not only do I have, you know, a year long run, sometimes longer, uh, and in, in our case, yeah, more than a year to, really craft and perfect and continue to dig deeper um, in Eliza's journey and, and in the journey that we were all taking on, on that stage every night. Um, such a rare thing to have that many, that many cracks at it, you know, and 
and also um, such a rare thing to feel such a deep connection with the audience every single night. Um, it's really just about being honest with yourself with what you need. I think sometimes I was living in a headspace of, you know, energy begets energy that I would feel tired, but I would show up and I would just start to take in, you know, my fellow actors. And, and that was enough to sort of get me through. Sometimes I was, you know, feeling, uh, you know, so, so elated and so jazzed and excited by everything that was happening in my life that it was really about sort of like centering myself and uh, remembering like why we're here and what, what the very, you know, basic storytelling that we're trying to do is. And, you know, it's just finding that balance because you never know when you're going to be running around all day, you know, maybe having to, you know, do things in your actual normal life and then show up at the theater at night and, and continue to give the same show. So if your day is varying, then of course, like what you do to prep, what you do to sort of clear out after every show will shift and change. And, you know, sometimes that looks like Netflix and chill. Sometimes it looks like, you know, put yourself to bed <laughs> right away. Don't go out and get red wine and French fries after the show, even though some nights that was actually the thing that I needed to sort of keep me going. And, you know, it, it shifted, it changed. Yeah, that's funny. Um, so so obviously you play Eliza, Alexander Hamilton's uh, wife in the show. I, can you talk a little, you mentioned like, how have your thoughts on her as a character, I guess, evolved? You, for people who don't know, you were you, you originated the role, you before it even went to Broadway, you played Eliza, like, I guess, like, thinking about it now, I, I don't know how much you think about it, but I would imagine it's been, like, five years, like, how do you think of her as a character now, or how, has that changed at all for you, or do you kind of, like, did you kind of get it, you know, did you have a thought about her while you were playing her, and that's kind of, like, what has withstood the test of time? Well, I think, um, you know, especially after doing the show and, um, you know, really starting to get um, active in my own life, my own community and my own outlook of the world, I do carry with me this, this idea that, you know, Eliza's legacy, her life, what I gained, what I learned from getting to step into her shoes was the concept that strength and courage and fortitude are a result of a deep understanding of humanity and compassion and empathy, that those, those things actually need to coexist to, in order to successfully um, work and, and implement themselves into the fabric of our society. And so I think with Eliza, you know, her, her, legacy continues to inspire me um, in my own work and my own career and um, my own activism. And, and I just, you know, I, I hope that now that people get to watch that show and, and watch her story, that they're also inspired by that because she lived longer than anyone else <laughs> in that show. Um, and it's just such a, a testament to the fact that these people, these, these characters we're playing were, were were people, they were humans, they had flaws, um, they had dreams, and that we're actually much more connected to them than we think we are. Um, and maybe we can learn from that and be inspired by that. Yeah, no, that's, that's really cool. Um, you mentioned like, uh, you like before, like the, the challenges of like, you know, helpless, you having to do all that movement and stuff. Is there, for you specifically, did you have like, what, what, what was your most challenging thing on? Like, did it change every night or like, like what, what number or whatever? Was it like helpless or was it burn? Like, I'm obviously have like all these big kind of like really uh, uh, with the pyrotechnics with burn. I don't know. I was like, what would be your biggest uh, challenge during the show? Um, I think, I think helpless was probably the biggest technical challenge just because, you know, there really wasn't, there wasn't an opportunity to sort of like lay back in it, um, you know, I really sort of had to be like ready, uh, ready to go. And um, I think, you know, definitely having to sort of burst onto the stage in uh, the Schuyler sisters was always like a really like um, energy packed moment. I think the three of us were always standing backstage being like, whew, but the beauty of that was that we got to be there together, you know, 
feeding off of each other's energy. When one of us was feeling a little bit under, the other two would be able to lift, you know, the other one up. And it was such a great, um, it was such a great vibe backstage because everyone had each other's back. So even if there was a moment that was a little harder, a little bit more difficult, it, I just always felt like everyone had my back. And I think in terms of just the, the scariest moment for me in the entire show was, was performing Burn because it was one of the few moments where it was just me on the stage um, with you know, a flame and a lantern and some letters and a bench. <laughs> and um, that was intimidating, but I, but I think that it really fed me in the storytelling because here you have a character who feels like they have nothing, they, they have nothing, there's nothing left. And somehow she has uh, overcome this, this sort of bump in the road that she's come across and really taken ownership over that moment. Um, so I think that, you know, feeling vulnerable in that moment as an actor was really helpful in, in playing Eliza in that moment and overcoming and working through that vulnerability and accepting the vulnerability. I think there's something powerful in letting yourself, you know, letting your vulnerability just be on display. Um, I think there's great strength in that actually. So that was actually helpful, even though it was terrifying. <laughs> it, it was, it was great. It was great. Yeah, I love I love that too because just from a storytelling standpoint, like having you know Eliza take like center stage there and like have the moment I think is just such a like I think I don't know if unique is the right word, but like you know I don't think a lot of shows maybe would have had that showcase right because it's so it's a Hamilton story. Maybe they would just try to like power through by telling it from his perspective, but switching to yours and your characters and having that number is so it's really powerful and emotional. And I mean, it's like a great. It remains, I feel like, a song that people reference. I, I, we talking about the legacy, like just like I'm erasing myself from the narrative has become like almost like a meme, I think. And like, yeah. uh, it's like it's interesting to me that like, have you come across? I mean, like, have you come across that in your own like five years later? Is that something you still see people saying on social media or whatever? I mean, I yeah, I, I see the memes. I love it. I I love that there's like there's a deep or not even a deep, just like a, a very um, on the surface connection to all these like great lyrics and moments of the show. And it just, I'm so flattered that that people, you know, connect it on, on a deep level, but also with the memes and the sort of like pop culture references. Like it's all just, it's all just really, really cool. And yeah. I think, you know, I've seen a lot of burn ones. I've seen a lot of, you know, burn ones, especially when we're talking about, you know, people getting burned. Uh, <laughs> a lot of like you know letters inflamed in front of my face so i've definitely seen those so uh, for for people after hamilton you you did amelie on broadway you were in the parisian woman I, you've done obviously a lot of film and television work as well voice work animated movies like what are you i guess like do you are you would you are you like what are you looking at for your next stuff like do you want to have another do you want to be in another musical like how, where are you at in your career right now and like hoping to what are you hoping to do next i guess yeah, I definitely want to be in another musical. Um, I'm, you know, I'm shooting a show right now in Chicago, and I just worked on a show that was um, shooting over the pandemic, actually, a couple of shows, Dope Sick, um, being one of them coming out this fall uh, on Hulu. And, you know, I, it's just, I just think that being able to do this job is so cool. And I feel so lucky that I that I get to do it. And so for me, like I, I'm just curious. I, I want to continue to let my curiosity, my um, maybe even my fears, guide me in in sort of like what I want to do next. Um, and and you know, let it let it come as they may. You know, I, I really just want to I want to keep working in the theater. I want to keep doing film and television. Um, I just want to keep telling stories. It's just, it's the best job in the world. And I'm, I feel so lucky and I definitely, I love a good challenge. I, I love being, um, you know, in a place where I haven't gotten to take that road yet. And I love that, that sort of first step into a new exploration. So. Yeah. I love, I think one of the things I really enjoy about watching your career is that like, yeah, it's like tough. You're not, you're not like repeating yourself. I don't think, and at least, and I think that's really interesting as an audience member to see, like, you're always kind of doing a, a different thing. Um, you mentioned a dope sick. I, I just want to talk to you briefly about that. I don't want no spoilers or anything, but I know it's a, 
uh, coming this fall to Hulu. Like you said, I think Barry Levinson is, is the director, right? And it's all about the opioid crisis in America. Very timely uh, series. I, can you talk a little about like what that was like? And like you said, like I think shooting it throughout the pandemic probably added or maybe heightened that experience as well. Sure. I mean, you know, props to the production just on a on a you know very basic level of just the the coordination of being able to get everybody there and shoot it safely and get everybody tested um we were shooting in richmond so you know i was driving you know up and down the coast to get there to to do my shoot days and so you know like hats off to them for for making that work and it was a really really safe environment but yeah, I, I, I was just honestly so excited to be a part of this all-star cast, to get to work with Barry Levinson, to get to work with Danny Strong, who was an amazing writer creator. He wrote me this amazing arc for this show. And, um, you know, I, I was so excited to um, explore not only, you know, the context of what the story is, this opioid crisis, um, the, the sort of um, systematic issues that we're exploring in this storytelling, but also to look into the lives of the people within it, um, their hopes and dreams and desires and, and how the system has failed them. Um, it's really just such a, I've, I've watched a couple of the episodes and it's, and it's really beautiful done, beautifully done and I'm, I'm so excited for people to see it. Um, and, you know, I, I get to play uh, a sales rep and she's not necessarily, you know, she's, she's not as lovely and nice as Eliza, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that, um, but she's a human and, and she's trying really hard uh, to make it all work, which I think is true for a lot of us, right? We're just trying to figure it out and get by and so much of what drives us is, um, you know, our our ambitions and our desires and our our wants and needs to get from point A to point B, and how we do that. Uh, so it really sort of examines all sides from from every different perspective within this sort of systematic issue. And uh, yeah, I think people are really going to like it. Yeah, it sounds really, really great. Um, well, thank you so much. Philip Sue, uh, Emmy nominee, first time Emmy nominee this year for Hamilton in the Best Supporting Actress in a Limited Anthology Series or Television Movie category for or Hamilton, the movie, which is on Disney Plus right now. You could turn this off and go watch her again and she's great in it and it's still great. Uh, thank you so much, Philip, for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.